If you have a real-world problem to solve, you should use a design process to guide you. Our design process will take you through a series of steps and re-steps to develop an innovative solution to the problem you're looking to solve. It's a six-step design process to guide you in becoming a solutions finder. It's really a cycle that invites you to try, fail, go back and try again until you achieve greatness. Let's use a real-world story of a solutions finder to demonstrate. Narayana P. Sapati is from India. He discovered that in India, 120 billion pieces of plastic cutlery, forks, knives, spoons, end up in the trash. In a short period of time, that will have devastating consequences for the environment and human beings. So let's use this problem to see how our design process would work. Step 1. Formulate the problem. Explain it so you know what you're trying to solve. What is the reality? Narayana identified that our oceans contain over 100 million tons of plastic, which eventually break down into microplastic, but can take 450 to 1,000 years to fully degrade. In some places, you can find 60 times more plastic than plankton, the food of many of our sea animals. Over 100,000 sea animals die each year from eating plastic, and who knows how much plastic is in the fish we eat. That's the reality of the problem Narayana found. Now the ideal situation would be to reduce or eliminate disposable plastic cutlery. I'm sure he wondered if he could make cutlery out of a material that was not harmful to the environment and humans. Once you better understand the reality and the ideal, you need to consider what would happen if the problem situation were not solved. If we don't stop disposing of plastic cutlery and other plastics, our oceans may become plastic sludge, sea life may cease to exist, and human existence would certainly be threatened. So this is a good problem to solve. Once you have formulated your problem, the next step is to explore it further. Think about what you already know about the problem. Then start asking questions to which you want to find the answers. Along the way, you must consider how you will find those answers. How will you learn more? During the explore phase, you'll generate a lot of questions and seek a lot of answers. Chances are, Narayana did a bit of research on various biodegradable materials to use to make cutlery. Soon, you'll start generating ideas. Step three is to ideate. Start generating those ideas and generate lots of them. Don't just accept the first idea you find. And stop yourself from deciding if they'll work or not. Just keep generating ideas. You may find you need to return to explore the problem more as you generate ideas. Next. You'll sift through all those ideas looking for the best. Which ideas could solve the problem? Which ones are feasible and could be implemented? Meaning, are the resources available? Is it cost effective? And what could go wrong that you hadn't thought about? We call those unintended consequences. Your goal is to find one best solution that you want to pursue. Narayana had probably generated a lot of ideas for making cutlery from biodegradable materials. Now he had to select his favorite idea and maybe even explore further. And if you sift through your ideas and can't find one that works, you might need to generate more ideas. Mariana decided on an edible spoon made of various grains. When you finish eating, you can eat your spoon. But if you throw it out, it will decompose in four to five days. This edible cutlery would be highly nutritious if you decide to eat it, and it could keep in a store or your cabinet for three years before you had to use it. All of these considerations should come out as you sift through your possible solutions for the best one. Once you have an idea you think will work, it's time to give it wings. Test it out. Simulate the situation. Create a model. Draw up a plan. Design a storyboard. Something that you can test out. And then test it out. Now you might have a solution that can't actually be tested but you could survey people with the right expertise to tell you if they think it would work. Mariana had to try out his recipe and test his spoons. And he had to consider all situations. For example, would the spoon melt in hot tea? In the simulation phase, you may have to return to sift out a different idea, or generate more ideas, or go back to exploring the problem further in order to generate a workable idea. Keep in mind that all of your ideas won't necessarily work. Some may just have to fail. But you'll learn from those failures and go on to generate a better solution.
Look at this quote. Before Thomas Edison successfully invented the battery, he experienced a lot of failures. But he didn't see them as negative moments. He saw them as opportunities to find the right solution. Finally, when you arrive at the best solution, you need to advocate for it. Tell someone. You need to decide who your audience will be and with whom should you share this solution, other than your teachers, that is. Is it possible your idea could actually be put into action? And if so, who might be able to help with that? What's the best way to share your ideas? A video, a letter, a website, a model? Whatever it is, let your voice be heard. Mariana started a company where he sells different styles of edible utensils in various flavors. I really liked this problem and Narayana's solution, which is why I used it to share our design process. If you want to hear more about edible cutlery, you can watch the video on YouTube. But now, back to the design process. Just to recap, six steps. Formulate, explore, ideate, sift, simulate, and advocate. And while there's an order to the steps, each step can send you off to other steps as you work to find a solution. I bet you'll be good at this. Go change the world.